Well, welcome to Bar Al Hikman. This place has it all. Beautiful blue seas, Sabha, white beaches. It is one of my favorite spots in Oman. I love to camp here. But the reason we're here is because this is a modern carbonate factory. And it's a great opportunity to talk about the biological control on carbonate precipitation. Another thing you can observe is, you know, the abundance of corals on a flat top surface. So here I'm taking you on a little dive and you can see we see this nice branching corals, lots of fish. We have the two um, divers there. But what I want you to notice is that as we move away from the crest of this reef, just now, you see as the divers are going much uh, further down on the reef, you can start to see that there are less and less corals ahead of them. You see that? And you can also see that the waters are darker. You see that rock here at the, at the back is devoided of corals. And that's because it's deeper. And we need to talk about the control of light penetration on um, autotroph organisms, on the tea factory. So here's a theoretical graph that shows on the horizontal axis light intensity and or carbonate production. So light intensity is the dashed black line and the red line is carbonate production. The vertical axis is depth. Notice that all of these do not have scale. Okay, they're scaleless. They're, it's a conceptual diagram. We'll talk in a minute why this is a conceptual diagram at this point. But what I want to show you is that as you go further in the water column, light gets, gets absorbed. So you see we have a, a zone at the top of the water column where we have a lot of light right at the top. And this light decreases rapidly until what is known as the base of the light saturation zone. So the top is the light saturation zone. And then at that point, when most of the light has been absorbed, you have you know, still a, a slow decrease in light absorption, but there's already quite, um, already most of the light has been absorbed until you reach what is known as the base of the euphotic zone. Below the euphotic zone, there is no light, okay? Now look at the red curve, the carbonate production curve. It's very clear that carbonate production for autotrophs is maximum into the, the zone of light saturation, where you have lots of light, you have lots of autotroph production, which is normal because autotrophs need light to grow. They, they are photosynthetic organisms or they have photosynthetic symbionts. As we get towards the base of the light saturation zone, we see a net decrease in the carbonate production and that decrease continues into the euphotic zone until the base of the euphotic zone, at which point we have no production. So light penetration is extremely important for carbonate production. And to bring this point home here, I'm showing you some actual data from the Bahamas, looking at one type of coral, it's the Montastrea annularis. And basically what we have here is we have predicted growth of this particular coral in green dashed line. So that's the theoretical model. And then we have observed growth rates. So the growth rates are on the horizontal axis. They are in millimeter per year. And the vertical axis is depth below sea surface. And you can see that the maximum production of that coral in the Bahamas happens in the first 10 meters of the water column. So really shallow water condition are favorable to autotroph uh, carbonate production. And that means they're favorable to T factory settings. And then we have a net decrease of that growth and already at 25 meters, there is almost no growth. The growth is so reduced that these corals effectively will die eventually if they get any further so here you see a nice coastline with waves bringing sediment, sand, into the water. So how will this actually impact the tea factory? Well, one of the reasons the first diagram I showed you was theoretical and was not um, had no scale in terms of water depth or light penetration is because these are extremely variable. So here I'm showing you multiple location. In black, you have the area of active reef growth. In gray, it's areas of strongly reduced reef growth. And in white, it's areas of maximum depth. That's the last area in which the reef can grow. 
The vertical axis is meters below sea level, and we have different locations. And I just want to focus on a few key locations that represent the end member of this spectrum. Let's look at Pacific Atoll, like the Maldives. The Pacific Atoll, you can see, have active reef growth down to probably 80 meters, so quite deep. And there's still strongly reduced reef growth, but reef growth nonetheless, down to 130 meters below sea level, which is extremely deep. So that implies that you have enough light penetrating to that depth for the reefs to still be growing, although slowly. It implies that the water column is very clean, and that makes sense because we are in the middle of the Pacific, there is very little suspension material in the waters. There is very little clastic material in the water that would block or absorb sun light much faster. So that's why you can have active reef growth so deep. By contrast, look at some of the other locations. Let's look at Singapore, or let's look at the Persian Gulf, where we may have water conditions that are less clean, where you have more classic input from the land around there. And you can see that there, the, the active reef growth is limited to a few tens of meters, maybe 10, 20 meters, but you have no reef growth deeper than that. So turbidity, or the amount of sediment in the water column, plays a big role in controlling where carbonates can be deposited. And this is also one reason why the wave energy that cleans the water, cleans the sediments away, is beneficial for carbonates growth. So let's look at the distribution of the reefs in terms of latitude. So here you have a global reef distribution map, and the reefs are shown in red. And you can see something striking. All the reefs are within 30 degrees of latitude away from the equator. So 30 degrees north to 30 degrees south, we have reefs. Beyond this, we do not have reefs. So there's a strong control on latitudes on the reefs. This, of course, translates into a temperature control on the reefs. Modern corals are extremely sensitive to water temperature. So on this graph here, you can see different types of uh, organisms that exist in modern carbonate systems. So one that you're very familiar with is corals, the light blue lines. But we'll also talk about Halimeda, which is a green algae that precipitate a calcium carbonate skeleton. So Halimeda is also very common in tropical seas. You can see that the vertical axis represents relative abundance of these different grains. The horizontal axis represents latitude from 0 to 40 degrees. And it's striking how Halimeda and corals that are the backbone of tea factories in the modern world, at least in the Bahamas, starts to decline as you go further away from the equator. Even at 10, 20 degrees north, you already have less Halimeda, less corals, and they tend to disappear at 30 degrees, 35 degrees um, north or south. They are replaced in terms of abundance by mollusks, bryozoans, and brachiopods. These guys tend to do to be more prevalent in colder water. 